Hello and welcome to another video from Easy Academy. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to set up your Apache Kafka cluster using only uh, uh, Docker to do that. So in the previous tutorial that I did regarding uh, setting up Kafka without Zookeeper, we used uh, a Kubernetes uh, environment. We also had another one where we deployed um, Kafka on virtual machines powered by Ansible. Um, in this particular setup, we're going to be covering how to set up the same environment using just Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, several of you uh, requested this particular tutorial, so that's why I am covering it today. So let's get started on some of the contents we're going to be covering in this particular video. So we're going to cover some of the foundational items regarding this uh, topic, and then we're going to discover some of the internal and inner workings of the, the architecture that I've set up to support this particular scenario of running the Kafka cluster without Zookeeper only on Docker and how everything is working. Then I will show you how you can build the images locally because I don't want to have to host and maintain uh, the images on a central repository. You should be able to get the Docker file, build it yourself locally and just run it and get it going uh, quickly and then we'll talk about the, the cluster sizing so that's what we're going to be covering in the first uh, video and then in the second part of this series we're going to actually run the um, kafka cluster and then we'll cover how to do that in legacy mode with zookeeper uh, so i will show you a multi-node cluster that is being run in legacy mode and then i will show you uh, a single node cluster as well as a multi node cluster that is running without Zookeeper. And all these three scenarios will be covered uh, using just Docker to do it without having to set up individual virtual machines or running it on uh, Kubernetes. So that's what we're going to be covering in this particular video. And let's get started with the, with the content. Um, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please uh, feel free to do so and also share this uh, channel link with anyone you think would benefit uh, from this content. I'm also available on Instagram, Twitter and GitHub and you can check out my content as well as my course on massive data processing using open source software on my website as well. The link to that course will be available in the description of this video and you can check it out if you're interested uh, in that content. So the repository for this particular code sample that i'm going to be using in this video is available at the link um, here so let's actually take a look at how it looks like so if you uh, take a look at um, github.com slash uh, easy academy slash kafka in a box you should be able to take a look at the the content of the of the repo and you can have access to everything i'm going to be sharing uh, in this particular uh, um, uh, tutorial so um, that is all um, i have to say ab about that and when the time comes we would clone the repository and get it started but um, to clone it all you simply have to do is to run this command with the github url and that should copy it to your machine and then you can just navigate to the folder and get started with the instructions that i will share um, later on so what you need for this particular tutorial is you need Git to be available in your command line interface. You would need uh, an IDE like IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code. I have mine um, as Visual Studio Code where I have you know, the code samples that I'm, I'm using uh, for this. So that is what I'm gonna be using in mine. And then you need um, Docker desktop to be uh, up and running. And you would need a browser in case you wanna check out uh, the documentations and some of the items I have in the repository and then we're going to cover the internals and inner workings of this particular architecture that I've set up so I have a script that I'm using to generate the configuration um, files based on what you specify in the environment variables in the docker file so um, to, to do that I created a python script and then I use that uh, to do that. So let me briefly show you, uh, show you that script. So the script is this um, generator configs file. Uh, it's a Python script written for in Python three. What it does is um, 
reading the environment variables that you're specifying in your Docker file, and then it would use that to generate um, a properties file that can be used by Zookeeper or can be used by Kafka or Kafka Connect. So when you come to your Docker Compose file, like the example we have here, and we're specifying the environment variables for Zookeeper, or we're specifying the environment variables for the Kafka broker, what is happening is that this particular script is copying those environment variables and then it is parsing them to generate uh, property files that can be used. So um, based on the prefix like this one here, it would convert it to all lowercase broker.id and basically it is looping through all the environment variables that start with the prefix and, and it will convert it um, to the subsequent um, property configuration that is needed for that uh, particular um, component. So that's how it works. And then uh, we have entry point scripts. So in the entry point scripts, basically when we get to uh, the broker um, or the Zookeeper one, it basically um, loads the uh, script to capture the environment variables and then it will go ahead and format the storage if it's uh, running in craft mode if it's not running in craft mode that is skipped and then it just goes ahead to uh, capture that and then we proceed with starting up the the cluster so the, the first step of what happens in this script is that it runs through all the environment variables uses that to generate the properties file and then once that is done then it goes ahead uh, and formats the directory if you're running in craft mode. If you're not running in craft mode that um, does not use Zookeeper, then no formatting is necessary. And it will just proceed to starting up the Kafka cluster and everything is uh, pretty much done. So that is how the inner workings of the script works. And then I have Docker Compose scripts for the three different uh, setups. So if you navigate to the Compose directory here, I have the legacy, which is running it with Zookeeper. So for this particular Compose script, we have the first node, which is going to be Zookeeper. And then we have uh, three other uh, Kafka nodes that are running. And those would provide us the, the brokers that we need. So one Zookeeper node, one um, debugger that you can log into to navigate the cluster inside the network for Docker Compose. And then you have three broker um, nodes that are going to run uh, all as uh, as containers so that is the the setup for that let's uh, go back to my uh, my powerpoint so uh, in, in summary this is how the inner workings you know of the architecture is set up we have a script that captures environment variables and then uses that to create properties files for zookeeper for kafka connect and for the brokers or nodes in craft mode we have entry point scripts that is being used inside the container to call the um, property file generator, and capture the environment variables, and then start up the, the node. And then we have Docker Compose scripts that puts everything together, and then you use that uh, to run it. So if you take a look at that directory, you should be able to see the uh, all the Compose files that we're going to use for this. So now, how do we build the Docker image? So once all this is put together. I am not hosting the Envir the Docker image in a central repository. So you're going to have to build those Docker images yourself. So to do that, I have a couple of Docker, 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 Docker file that we use. Uh, the first one you need to run is going to be this one. So this one is the base. Basically it downloads. What happens here is that it downloads the Apache Kafka uh, project and then it uh, unzips um, it decompresses the tarball and then uh, everything else is set up using the scripts and the, and the default properties files that I have uh, over there. Once uh, this one is done, um, all you have to do is run this command. So docker build and then you call the base, uh, you call the base docker file and then that would go ahead and build this particular image for you. So that will build this image and then this base image is used um, to build the zookeeper image. 
So the command to build it will be docker build and then you specify the docker file for the zookeeper image and then the particular uh, image name, the output. So all those, all those uh, commands to build the Docker, Docker files are all available here. So I'm going to zoom in here for you to take a look. So to build the Docker images, we build the base image, which is the first one. And then we have all these other three commands to build the Zookeeper image that we're going to use to build the image for the Kafka brokers. Uh, in legacy mode or the brokers and quorum controllers um, in the craft mode and then we have the other one here that builds the connect uh, the connect image so that is how you're going to build the the images um, and then uh, next is once we have all these images then we're pretty much ready to get rolling and we can start to run uh, the service so we have the legacy mode which is just the zookeeper uh, um, the, the the legacy mode is actually with zookeeper so with this uh, with this mode you're gonna run it with zookeeper so this mode has one zookeeper node it has one zookeeper node so if we if we take a look at if we take a look at the, the docker compose file we have one zookeeper node and then we have three uh, kafka brokers so that is the first one that I will show you coming up. Uh, and then in the next uh, uh, cluster size, we have uh, Kafka running in craft mode where we have Zookeeper out of the picture. And then we just have one single node running without Zookeeper. So in that particular one, that will be referring to this one here where I don't have any Zookeeper node I just have one Kafka node and that is running in craft mode. Now, what really distinguishes between craft mode and non-craft mode is that if you have the node ID and the process roles defined in the properties file, then that, that automatically signals that we need to run it in craft mode without Zookeeper. When this is absent, then it runs it in the legacy mode, which requires you to specify the uh, Zookeeper instance that you're gonna use for your cluster. And then for the other multi-node cluster without Zookeeper, we have the four nodes that are running here. And then these four nodes uh, are gonna provide us with three brokers as well as three quorum uh, controllers. So when we take a look at when we take a look at uh, the mode, the multi-node environment, we have the first node is just running the controller, the second node is running just the broker, and then the last two nodes are running both the controller and the broker in combined mode. So when it's running in combined mode, like I covered in the other videos, this implies that you have the controller and the broker in the same machine, and which actually serves as two nodes instead of uh, one node. So this ends up looking something like this, where you have uh, three controllers managing the metadata, and then you have two, uh, sorry, three, three uh, nodes running the, the broker and storing all the data for the topics that are gonna be happening inside the cluster. So um, that's it for now. And then we're gonna take a look at a summary of what we've covered so far. So we have covered the foundational items and how the architecture is working internally. And then we covered how to build the Docker images. And then after that, we did the cluster sizing. Now in the next video coming up, I'm gonna show you how to run the three uh, clusters both in legacy mode and then in craft mode without Zookeeper. So thank you very much for your time today. Again, if this content has been useful to you, please subscribe to the channel and like the video and also share the channel with other people you feel will be interested in this particular content. And don't forget to check out my website uh, for the course on how to process data if you're interested in that. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.